Uh, all right, so uh, the question was asked, uh, how do you determine whether a prophet exists or not? And the, uh, so in reference to whether or not Muhammad existed, I refer to the parallel example that's been done in Christianity over the last 200 years as the technique to determine whether Jesus existed. So, and it's called the silent historian problems. And it's the idea that, so first we'll look here. There's been uh, a few people have argued that Muhammad, did Muhammad exist? And, uh, or was he, or inquire into the obscure origins, because there's not much been written on biography of Muhammad, the origins of him. So, with respect to, uh, so Frederick the Great said, he said they, uh, uh, they, they, there's, there's a few people here that have said he, well, he exists. Uh, okay. For example, in my, I've been work. Oh, is here? This is Parvi's name. Pa what's his name? Parvi's name. Par Parvi's name? Parvi's. 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 Hey, Parvi's, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm very happy to be uh, in uh, Karachi speaking to uh, Mirza. Uh, it was very good. Uh, it was a little, a little bit long, about 20 hours, but we made it here safely. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're getting a lot of uh, interaction and dialogue, and then when it's all done, we're going to have about 30 hours of video. We're going to put it on YouTube for everybody to watch the world, for educate young children. Yeah, we're doing, we've been going about 10 hours per day. We start at uh, 9 in the morning, then we go to about uh, between about five to six o'clock at night, and we've been we went through all of Mercer's book the first three days, about uh, sixty pages per day, and now we're on the fourth day, and we're going through some of the places mercer has been cited online in in, uh, in America, and then we're going looking at some of the debate we had in 2014, and then we're in the last two hours today we're going to look at some one of his new articles that he's written about the infinite energy of Allah. So uh, everything is turning out pretty good. It would have been nice if you could have come, could have come you're in Islamabad now. Uh, well, uh, thank you for calling. It would have been nice if uh, you would have come with us. You could have asked some questions. Uh, yeah, it turns out that I was going to show the video, but now we've decided that uh, uh, Mer, uh, Mer Arshad is going to be uh, presenting by teleconference, televideo. So he's going to write an art. He's going to write a, a presentation, and then he's going to present over a Skype or an iPhone or through the internet to my phone or, or my uh, computer, and then we're going to play his presentation at the conference. So if you want to, if you want to look at, the, he's already signed up on the conference. So if you go, you go to your phone, your internet right now, and you type in. Uh, Two Cultures Thermodynamics Conference, and then you uh, you go, you go down to the bottom of the page, and you click on a link to the uh, the main page of the conference. It's like IE International Conference on Thermodynamics 2.0, and you look on the country representatives. MERS has already signed up to represent Pakistan. So I've already, I've already emailed the conference organizer, and he's emailed me back. And he said he's very happy that. Mers is coming to present, and he's going to be. Uh, he says thank. He wants me to send thanks to his family. So it's going to be very good. Yeah, the YouTube channel is going to be Human Chemistry 101. So it's going to be in about a, a month. I'm going to start uploading about two videos a week because it's going to take a while to edit 30 hours of video. But I'm going to upload probably maybe two videos a week, 45 minutes each video, and then probably by the end of about two months I'll have all of the videos uploaded. So you go to YouTube, Human Chemistry 101, I have about 2,000 subscribers and you'll see the videos. And I have a playlist, it's going to be called a Mirza Big Interview Day 1, Mirza Big Interview Day 2, and so on, we're all four days all together. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any uh, questions for me? Okay, thank you for coming.
Jim, you want to speak to uh, Mirza again? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if he's there. Hey, welcome. Janabi Ali Assalamu Alaikum. With Mr. Parvez name, I went through Ibn Warak. So this guy, these guys were walking together, just talking together. I'm not wrapping up. Just, just I'm telling you my version. Why I believe Muhammad was there. So, thing. It is a historical fact that these people who said they believe in Muhammad, they took over half the Mesopotamian. Okay, turn the camera on. Sorry, I can actually, I can repeat this. You want to wait? Let's just wait. Don't say nothing until we, until we wait. Get into get into vault. You want to go? No, no. I am I am going to be reasonable, all right? Because I reasoned my religion. I never was see left or right for that time. I walked out of every religion. Okay. I was born a Muslim, yes, but I did not know anything about Islam. But for that matter, any other religion. So I studied a lot. Studied a lot. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying that I've studied everything, but the thing is that this, the, the guy is discovered. What do you think about this? 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 What very भी आके भूल गई religion mythology book oh wow huh? collection so you have a collection नहीं नहीं अभी अभी ये पांच घंटे के अंदर चला जाएगा पांच घंटे में यहाँ से निकल जाएगा और वो अब वो वहाँ पर रहेगा तो ये conference का मतलब ये कह रहा है अगर आप serious हों तो इसके ऊपर भी बोलना है मेरा सारे के आप लोगों के वो तो रहे हैं they're all listed on mine but I'm already impressed with your knowledge because the way you have actually compared things this for what was I was doing 2011 हमें भी यही कह रहा है I have 174 religious books. These are the ones I recently, recently by. Like uh, one of my actually after my book. Now I have a go-to person for you know discussing religion mythology because I don't find people they shut their, their, this uh, this topic down. Yeah. I, I tell them all right. I'm one not thing, one thing you can do is uh, if you want to, I talk to some Muslims about this. Is our 
You did not say anything about Ahura Mazda. You have only two. about the Quran. Look at this. So if you want to discuss publicly with me, this is a good place to go. So we click right here. Yeah, I, I run this whole site. I mean, this is me. John, John, John Bert, the one who wrote the book. Yeah, 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 this is right here. So basically, you are Sadi. Sadi Parno, I didn't realize that when I got into thermodynamics, I thought he was the main brain. Because he's the one who started the subject. But it turns out the main brain is Rudolf Blossius. He's the one who really found the whole thing. But I was ignorant at first. The more you learn, the more you less you become ignorant. So, Community के ऊपर में तुम्हारे जो अपने frustration हैं तुमने उसके लिए हमारे यहाँ पर frustration नहीं है ये जैसे मैंने कहा था कि हमारे यहाँ पर frustration नहीं है ये जैसे मैंने कहा था कि हमारे यहाँ पर frustration नहीं है ये जैसे मैंने कहा था कि हमारे यहाँ पर frustration नहीं है ये जैसे मैंने कहा था कि हमारे यहाँ पर frustration नहीं है ये जैसे मैंने कहा था कि हमारे यहाँ पर frustration नहीं है ये जैसे मैंने कहा था कि हमारे यहाँ me and next man Chen, he's posted up a link this article this guy so we argued the article didn't really wasn't very supportive but it it's a some things I didn't understand about it there's some fine things but all right if you want to ask questions sign on here I am I'm turning on the okay let's start it's already turned on okay okay so we were talking about so we were talking about uh, uh, the question whether or not Muhammad existed. And you have to have, if there's a, if there's historical, uh, uh, Faison says if there's historical evidence, how can he deny that he, that he doesn't exist? If there's all these people that say he existed. So I'm going to show him an example of what's called the silent historian problems for Jesus. Yeah. So we go over here and Now, you say, so 
So you go down through here. Now Jesus supposedly existed. It was born in 0 AD. And so here's Jesus. It should have been, should have been, if he was born right here, either the people who were before him or after him within his time range should have talked about him. Now, the key here is you have to, if you just cite religious scholars, you that, that, that that's a biased source. So you have to find someone who's not biased towards your point of view. And that would be, for example, uh, Seneca the Younger. He wasn't a Christian or anything. He has no objective, re any reason to argue the support to Jesus. And he wrote a 1,600-page treatise on morals in 55 AD. And so if Jesus was the most moral person ever existed in 33 AD, Jesus should be in this book. And you can read the book right there, but he mentions nothing of Jesus. So there's a clue that this is, he's silent about Jesus. He's a historian, but he doesn't say anything about Jesus. So you can go. I, I have a question there. Yeah. If I'm not a call out to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, you know, it is a well known fact that these people were very few. Jesus of Nazareth had a very, very few people for uh, followership, right? No, no. There's some, here's one example. From, from, from the start, when he existed, he had. I think he read um, thousands of people or something like this. No. Okay. Uh, anyways, there's some code in there. That there's no. He read. There was stuff. No, what I was trying to say was. Yeah. That uh, for in order to a person, uh, in order for a person to be quoted, mm -hmm. like in the history, and for the historian yeah. to actually take notice of this person, the reactions have to be, you know, on a scale, at least. Mm -hmm. If these uh, reactions are very minimal, because you know what the the, the story about Jesus in Islam is that he had very few followers in the beginning and these followers were not more than 12 or 13 and these people out of these people somebody betrayed and, and uh, these other followers these people yeah, this, this is the so you, so what I was saying was that it wasn't a thing to be noticed at that time, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Saying, okay, maybe. I'll give you. A, I'll give you a second example. That this is something I've done myself. Mm -hmm. For example, Abraham supposedly existed in the year 1900 BC. Mm -hmm. Now, Abraham is the prophet of all the world's religions. Supposedly, he's this great person. You, and you're saying he's the because there was only a few people of Jesus. Now, uh, Abraham was so famous. He led everybody out of uh, Egypt. Uh, or no, it was Moses. But Abraham was the uh, founder of all the religions of the world, Christianity, Jewish, so by 1900 BC. So a thousand years later, or 1500 years later, by the time of Aristotle, in 330 BC, he should have, his, his fame should have been known. But if you look in the collected works of Aristotle, there is no mention of uh, Abraham in the back of his book. So that's a clue that he didn't exist. So you can do this for any prophet. So if you want to go through from I, I Muhammad, accept your logic. Yeah. I accept your logic. So what you as have to do, is, all right? I, I accept it as it yeah. is. Uh, what I believe is that um, we were too scattered at that time. Mm -hmm. The knowledge from this part, that part, they were freely apart, mm -hmm. and there were some things which were common. Like for example, you were saying that the myth of flood, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the flood mythology, it existed. In the Greek, what mythology? The the flood, the flood, the flood, yeah, flood yeah, mythology, the flood mythology. It, it existed in in even in Greek mythology, it existed in the Germanic uh, mythologies, it did exist uh, in in uh, in India, in uh, let's say uh, Zoroastrian version, everywhere it existed, right? Okay, mm -hmm. and No was the uh, direct descendant from. Oh no, sorry, he was. So he was a direct descendant of Adam, mm -hmm. and after Noah, 
uh, came Ibrahim, right? Ibrahim. I don't know what 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 sequence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's about right. Yeah, right. There was Adam, then Noah, Adam, then Noah, then Noah, and, and then Abraham, Abraham, right? Then Abraham. Okay. So what I believe is that already there was too much, you know, too many societies, too many things going on in there, and the news did not travel that that well. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But yeah. there are proofs. I will actually, okay, I, I can actually show it right now. But I can actually, you know, uh, give you uh, proofs where Abraham is being mentioned uh, in India. Alright? In Canaanite. And in, 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 in here. Uh, Where are you ever done? Adam. I'm the father of <coughs> He's my father, okay? Oh, what you, so you're a... Uh, he is a... Uh, like grandson, you are the son. You are, who are you? Who are you? He is the father of Sharyar. Oh, okay. Nabi Muhammad. Nabi Muhammad. My name is Sharyar's father. Yes, yes. His yes. oh. father's his father's. Oh, okay. Thank you. Husband. He's uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's a very good driver. <laughs> <laughs> Sharyar is very good. Yeah. Where uh, where? Sit down, please. Oh yeah. Well, welcome. Sure. Then come to Pakistan. Stream. Come to Bangladesh. Bye bye, Karay. Bye bye, Pakistan. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, maybe we can let's bring Mirza back in and talk. Is he taking prayer break? Uh, he is offering prayers. Oh, okay. Hold on. So let's, uh, you know, carry on our debate on your website. Yeah, yeah. Good idea. Last year. Let me see what we're up to here. So I think we're gonna if we Mirza wants to talk about this infinite Allah paper. So we gotta talk about that before if we leave at six. Who's gonna drive me to the airport at six? Oh, thank you. So uh, I was telling you about is this recording? Mm -hmm. You want me to turn it off? No. no. I wanted to tell you about the, uh, uh, why I believe Muhammad existed. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, these people who believed in Muhammad, who said they believed in Muhammad, yeah. right? and they, these people testified that there was this guy. Right? Mm -hmm. Even if you do not believe in his existence, the existence as a prophet, you have to believe that this, uh, there lived a person named Muhammad, at least. Yeah. People say right. the same thing about Jesus too. Right? No, it was all right, fine, okay, I accept their logic because if there is any historical evidence, then you have to accept. Um, I am not talking about Jesus right now, I am talking about Muhammad. And, yeah. and, and there is a definite historical knowledge of his existence. Yeah, I'll give you one, one example though, that they did uh, you have to run what's called a Muhammad seminar. Mm -hmm. And if you bring all of the scholars in, mm -hmm. all of the Muhammad scholars, and you list all of the facts you know about Muhammad, <laughs> and say you'll get 100, 100 uh, facts that are supposedly historians have said are true, and you everybody starts debating, and you find out, you argue with each other, look at the sources and the connect, and then you find out, you, you, you say, how do we know, you take all of the different facts, and how are we certain that this actual fact is true? What, what, where do we have, what sort of logic do we have? We know that this one fact is true. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in about the 1910s, they did that in America with the Jesus Seminar. Mm -hmm. And they found that only 33% of what's been said about Jesus can be actually, we, do, we know is solidly true. Because the other 73% is for whatever reason, I'm not saying it right, because I don't, uh, there's a book or something on the Jesus Seminar, but. Uh, so this, the, this is exactly what Islam says about Jesus. It says that a lot of information uh, prevalent about uh, Jesus is wrong. Mm -hmm. This is what exactly Islam says. Yeah. It, it, and it says that the... the it merges it, back. Yeah, all right. Okay, let's carry on with your... Nini Chacha? Yeah, very well. Nini, you have a camera. Are you? You have a camera. Yes, I was. Yes. Uh-huh. So? We already agreed that we are going to take this discussion on his website. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about the, the uh, infinite Allah.
So I have gone down in history. <laughs> and Jim Jim said, dug me out of the out of history again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think about that? <laughs> I'm trying to watch the whole thing. Okay, that is the This, is, this, is, this is, should be the theme of my paper. <laughs> you can present this at the, at the uh, conference. So, so here we have the. Uh, what, when did you write this paper? What year? This year? You read, when did you write this one, this one? I wrote uh, a few days ago. You wrote this paper a few days ago. Okay, so this is what I. I've given this to you. Yeah, yeah. I skimmed it. I didn't really read the full thing. So we're going to take a look at one of Merz's newer papers. He's interested in the uh, that the physical chemical uh, proof of uh, interpretation of Allah according to the Quran. Something he's real uh, uh, passionate about. Mm -hmm. So you say here that the uh, the concept of uh, lawlessness. The concept of flawlessness of Allah. The concept of the flawlessness of uh, the concept of flawlessness has been examined in terms of socio physical chemical theory which considers the divine light E plus what is this? Infinite energy plus what? As what is that zero? That's right. Entropy is evil. Entropy is entropy a condition of zero. As exclusive, as exclusive, exclusive of, of laws. laws of entropy, and uh, that laws are ingrained in the decoupling of the quantum of e, e, e finite into mass. E finite into mass. The entropy driven process that are exclusive of laws such as in the new variable dimensions, including time and space. That's where it, it, it came in. Okay. Because that big bang, that time and space came. Uh, okay. So what are the So we've already talked about this. He thinks Allah is the uh, divine light. We talked about this in the debates in 2014, and that a light that burns in a cave that does not have fuel is impossible according to thermodynamics. Whatever surah that is, where Allah is described as a light in a cave uh, that burns with this, with a, with olive oil that glows or something like that, right? So uh, you can, from, we already talked about that, how can you prove it, it's not physically possible for uh, olive oil to glow without uh, infinitely, without a, uh, uh, so that's uh, fictional, glowing olive oil is fiction. It's not, uh, do you have glowing olive oil in here that we can look at or you just take, you take it on faith? That uh, that's a hard process. You know, that's an Arabic and all this. It is not this is our, a fact. This is, this is the one, one of the an models. Mm -hmm. And it, it is made the model. But I feel I, in, in portraying in infinite, E, e infinite, in portraying in. So, so, so you know, I, when, when you read infinite, this verse in the Quran, light. he has this verse right now. Divine light. We can you actually go inside the, uh, the middle, the in, innumerable uh, dimensions. And that conversion of mass. Please go down. Yeah. So, so you are talking about Allah Mubarak. Expression, expression. Right. This, this, this is a statement of fact from Quran. This one right here. Until, until, until this point. It is a statement. Well, trans of fact. Do the translation for us. Yeah, Allah Nurus Samawati Wal Allah is the. This is the translation right here. 